Hey, Barney. <laughs> hey, Fred. Uh, <laughs> hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> On today's episode of Men Are So Smart, we're going to talk to you about some of the worst cars of all time, Ronnie. Do you have like a car that you had with just the worst, like maybe your first one? Uh, first one I had was the Flintstone Mobile. Oh, that's right. And you were the one that introduced new granite disc brakes, if I yes. remember correctly. <laughs> Saved a lot of wear and tear on one's feet. We're going to talk about that next on Men Are So Smart. So, Ronnie, uh, this week I came across this article from um, The Drive. Okay. Uh, the magazine, mm -hmm. great magazine, really popular with men. And this one particular author, came Neil Pollock, by the way, came up with a list of some of the worst cars of all time. And so I was thinking back, and we'll share this list with you coming up in, in a couple of minutes, and some you may dispute and others maybe not so much. And, and for that matter, if you have the uh, time, send us a comment about the worst, the worst car. car you ever owned, yeah. personally. Uh, yeah. I would have to think that at one point, I owned a 1979 Volkswagen Scirocco. Oh. Remember when Dave Dubiak I remember, isn't had it? his? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Mine was too. Okay. I bought it used, mm -hmm. and the person used it as a daily driver. I had it for two years. I drove it every single day. I never changed the oil. I was afraid to. I was. I just had no idea what was going to come out of the bottom of that car. Worst car ever, but the most reliable car I've ever had to. That speaks volumes. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, um, I had a Chevy Vega. Ooh, so, I wonder if that made the list today. Yeah. The worst cars of all time. You know what? And during the time that I owned it, yeah, uh, it was it was plenty reliable. Mm -hmm. But uh, they started having problems with them because they had a aluminum head, aluminum head, and a cast iron block. Oh yeah, they don't mesh the well. The two metals expand mm -hmm. and contract differently. Yeah, and they were having head gasket problems. Yep, I remember and, that. Uh, a lot of premature wear in the block and oil consumption. I never had any of that problem. None. But then again, I worked at an automotive uh, parts uh, place, and so oil was thirty nine cents quart. Came, kids, it came in a round paper, paper container. Yeah, it was a can. About that big. You had to have a special tool to puncture the top and then pour the oil in. Yeah. But at 39 cents a quart, who cares? Yeah, you spill on the ground, no big deal. Yeah. I remember a couple of my friends, because I was in a little bit of a Vega club, uh -huh. and they were already having problems, and they would pull into a gas station and tell them, fill up the oil and check the gas. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Vega meets our list. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. So here is that list of worst cars of all time. Again, we would love your submissions to our comment section. Number 10. The 1978, and yes, we were both alive then. Yes. AMC Concorde. Let's find out more. Ooh. Other AMC models, like the Pacer and the Gremlin, typically make lists like this, and with good reason, they were nightmarish shit boxes that literally popped bolts on the interstate. However, uh, this author doesn't have any experience with those cars. His first car, which his parents bought him for $600 in 1986, was the AMC Concorde, a car that AMC used to replace the semi-light Hornet, which had been seen on the end of its run of production. Now, uh, Ronnie, I I'm going to go ahead, uh, since this is one man's opinion based on personal experience, I'm just going to go ahead and supersede that Concorde with the Gremlin and the Pacer. Yeah, and equally bad, they had an uh, AMC Eagle, the Jeep Eagle, yeah. I believe, mm -hmm. which was a four-wheel drive car. Right. It was a Jeep, basically, with a car body on it. Mm -hmm. AMC were, was part of Jeep. Yeah, yeah, and they were pretty terrible. Yeah, they were they were awful. All right, so there you go. First up on this list, list we're going to say it's the uh, AMC Pacer and Gremlin. Okay. Right? The next one mm -hmm. is the newest version, which then this author listed the 2013 Dodge Dart. Oh, you know what? A buddy of mine had one of those. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I've, you know, we go, we walk around, we take our dog walking uh, at a used car site, and I see lots of them out there. Mm -hmm. uh, few interchangeable GMC monsters aside, this compact, an early offering from the merged Fiat Chrysler Group, was the yeah. worst new car I've driven in my dumb life. Uh, from the cheap canvas seats, ooh, that doesn't sound comfortable. Especially at all. on a hot day. To the anemic six speed transmission, uh, the dart harkened back to an era where tiny cars tormented large men with their tight bucket seats. Uh, coming out of an automotive recession, this thing appeared just when cars were uh, starving to get good and big again. Starting mm. to get good and big again. No one wanted to throw back as the CUV began to rise. Dodge discontinued the Dart after the 2016 model sputtered away. And a good thing, too. Ciao. See you later. Yeah. Uh, you know, it seems like a, a lot of these cars are Chrysler-oriented. Uh, next up on our list, any Chrysler Sebring convertible. Oh, boy. That's... In my last house, there was this really super fine-looking mom that lived right across the street from me. And she had one of these cars. It was a satellite Sebring convertible. And, oh, my God, when I would see her and she had the top down and driving that thing with her wind, uh, hair in the wind, it was like uh, some kind of a 1980s rock band video. Straight out of yeah. uh, uh, vacation. Uh, or, 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 vacation. Or a poison video or a white snake or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, at first, it was great because I would see her in the car all the time. And I thought, wow, that car is pretty cool. I like the lines of it. And then I began to see it up on jack stands more often than nothing. <laughs> All right, so let's find out. Pick a year, any year, satellite Sebring convertible. Uh, the closest modern American car manufacturing got to an Eastern European level. Disaster. Opening up the roof didn't make the gear shift any less wonky or the design worth anything more than a back-of-the-lot airport rental in Toledo, Ohio. Yes. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, once called the Sebring, the worst car in the world. Um, I would say it's a it's a junk. It, it really is. And it's funny because you don't see a lot of them on the road anymore. No. Um, and no. I think there were engine problems with those things, at least with what my neighbor was telling me. Uh, so that makes our list. Any Chrysler Sebring convertible. Okay, this next one, this is a no-brainer. And I would think that Everybody who's ever owned or driven a car probably understands this one, how this one made the list. It's the Yugo. No, you go. You go, no, boy. You go. You go, boy. Uh, so the Yugo will have a place on worst car lists until the end of time. We can only hope. Yes. <laughs> While it seems like something that only appears in retro communist block movies <laughs> as a punchline, the Yugo actually existed in America during my, this writer's adult memory. Yeah. Sold here from 1985 to 1992 at around $4,000, mm -hmm. but was worth about a tenth of that price. Yeah, probably its weight. That's about e it. Yes, uh, in scrap. Right. It had a 1.1 liter engine that oh, generated wow, the big one. 55 horsepower. <laughs> no way, not 55. I think my lawnmower makes just about that. Now. I've seen it, it does. <laughs> and the interior was filled with so much plastic could have mistaken it for a suppository. Oh, my God. Uh, it also had carpeting. Uh, no car should have carpeting except for a Rolls Royce. Smells accumulate, and they really accumulated in the Yugo. Yeah, well, it probably came that way from the factory. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's got the factory air stank. Yugo, I think, is... All uh, right, next up on our list, it's funny, because uh, in our pre-production meeting, when Ron and I were, were putting together the show... We talked about this to topic, and he picked this one. Yep. Uh, next up is the Pontiac Aztec. Bingo. This serviceable villain, offensively misspelled and named after a culture that was exterminated by genocide, <laughs> but not before committing human sacrifice for eons, yeah. gained a modicum of hipness after Walter White drove it around during Breaking Bad, but... That's not really the sort of status detail you want associated with your car. In retrospect, the Aztec's hideous, elongated styling could be considered an evolutionary misstep. Ten years ahead of its time, on the way to the CUV, but that didn't make it any more charming to behold. 
you just you knew when you saw one of these things you'd go oh my god yeah we used to call it the shoebox of love it's and you know what i can't imagine because they have designers that work on these things right and they carve them out of clay yeah and i always wonder how their meetings go ahead yeah. of time. hey i got an idea hey look at this i've i've went ahead and made a full-size blow-up of it what yeah. do you think that's the ugliest thing i've ever seen I'm, let's make it yeah enough people had to sign off on it that right. they actually made it yeah and one guy at the end finally it was the head of the department went all right we're going with that uh, yeah. as azteca yeah or whatever you called it and then somebody said rut row yeah about uh, two days after yeah so next up on the list and i knew somebody that had one of these in fact he liked the first one so much he bought a second one great idea it's the pt cruiser uh-huh yep consumer affairs page for pt cruiser Another disastrous uh, early aughts proto CUV is an endless fount of hilarity. The car tries to kill me, literally. It shuts off for no reason anytime over 75 miles an hour. That's too fast. Down the interstate. Yeah, it's a safety device. Right. Uh, the alarm goes off for no reason at all hours. The horn honks for no reason while driving. Uh, it sounds like somebody's got a case of PTSD. <laughs> yeah. That's not funny. <laughs> At the time, it appeared the PT Cruiser's retro styling made it seem kind of cute and unique. I think girls liked it. When they first came out, Vicky and I made a special trip to the Dodge dealership in the Auto Mall to go look at them. And we thought they were very cool. The dealer had a $5,000 dealer markup on top of the sticker price because they were so popular they were popular looking they uh -huh. were good looking wow uh, yeah talk about losing value the moment you drive off a lot huh car cow yeah so the, the buddy of mine that owned one he had a regular pt cruiser and then he bought the convertible which is a two-door with a turbo oh that's right i remember they did have turbos huh yes but and they had trouble with them he had troubles from yeah i mean immediately right and yeah they're just uh they turned out to not be very good cars i'm sorry if you bought one brand new and had to pay that dealer pack on top of it yeah yeah talk uh, about being upside down worst worst money you could spend ever all right so today on men are so smart we're doing this list of the worst cars of all time from the drive magazine uh the author's name is neil pollock and he's put this together based on personal experience uh if you didn't already know this in addition to doing this show, I do a radio show locally uh, on a Sacramento station. It's called the K-Hits Garage with Lou Ga Sweet Lou Gallagher. And um, if you're listening other places in the world, you can hear it on our podcast. Just go to the website. The podcast is cool because it takes out all of the songs, all of the commercials, just the talk part of the show for about 44 minutes. Nice. And um, you can hear it wherever you are. Just go to the website, 1015khits.com. There's a drop-down menu that says Hosts. Go down to my picture. I'm wearing sunglasses, and it'll take you right to the free podcast. So and check on, that on out. And on your show today, you talked about this car, didn't you? Or did that get uh, preempted? <laughs> It was the first Audible I called okay. in my day right. today, okay. early. All right. Yeah, I didn't have time for that, but uh, we will be talking about this list as well. Uh, the Next up on the list, the Pinto. Ooh. Any year Pinto. Yeah. We had a buddy that had one. Yes. He was so cool. You know why? His Pinto was a station wagon with wood paneling. Nice. That's styling, That's a nice friends. touch. You don't just yeah. go all willy-nilly about getting paneling on your station wagon. He didn't wagon. just have a Pinto. It was like a Pinto, like a country squire. It was like a Pinto on, on steroids. Yes. The Pinto has its own page in the American Museum of Tort Law because of a 1981 lawsuit, one of dozens filed against Ford for this death lemon. When the Pinto got rear-ended, sometimes hey, it would happen and it might blow up. Yeah. Uh, not always. Just spontaneously. Uh, once in a while. Yeah. Hey, what are the odds, right? Yeah. Apparently, uh, I'm sorry, in testing the Pinto, Ford crashed it more than 40 times at speeds of more than 25 miles per hour. I think that's probably because it's all fast it would go. Yeah. The fuel tank ruptured every time. Every time. So at least they got that going for them. Ford put it on the market anyway. 
I've seen that happen too many times over yeah. the years. Look at the uh, airbag uh, oh, situation boy. right now. Holy cow. Um, it ended up recalling more than a million of these bombs on wheels. Nothing like that would ever happen in a contemporary car, right? <laughs> yeah, except for diesel engines yeah. and airbags that shrew shrapnel. Yeah. Um, still, a chronically exploding gas tank is more than enough to consign the horrible Pinto to a special place in automotive Hades. In hell, yes. Got you. Yeah. Uh, so, the next car on the list... And this, this obviously, it's a personal vendetta uh -huh. that this guy, it's the 1978 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. What? Yeah. Uh, like the first car on the list, the author put this Sedan DeVille on here for personal reasons. Yeah. It was certainly a hideous and overlong tin bucket. And he got six miles of the gallon. Okay, I can relate to that. Six remember that gallons black, to the mile. Remember that black truck I had? Yeah. I had a 454. It oh, got yeah. seven. Seven? Oh, boy, seven. that was pushing it. It got ten on the freeway, though. Yeah. Double digits. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Consumer. Uh, yeah, so which simply didn't fly in Jimmy Carter's Gas Crisis America. Resale values fell through the floor for this dinosaur, which is my, why my grandfather was able to buy a lime green one for only $100 a few years after it had been released. My grandpa called his car the Jolly Green Giant, or the JGG. Uh, he recalled it had white vinyl seats pockmarked with more than a few cigarette burns. Run. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, that's kind of another Thanks inside joke there. A previous show. From a previous show. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. Okay, so the Cadillac. It drove blah, like blah, an ostentatious nightmare. Yeah. Grandpa told me that uh, my sisters and his sisters that he sometimes lent the JGG's engine to NASA to help them power the space shuttle. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, he even had a cartoonist do a caricature of the Columbia with the JGG pasted to its back. Uh, spent a lot of miserable summer afternoons driving around Southern California, my grandpa's mythical hoopty. Hoopty! Woo! But at least it wasn't a pinto. You know, speaking of Cadillacs, when I was eight years old, I lived in New, virtually New Brunswick, New Jersey. That's where I grew up till I was eight. And then my dad accepted a job uh, at a military base here in California, and we drove 3,000 miles from New Jersey to California in a 1959 Cadillac. Oh, you know the one with the, the fins in the big back? wings, yeah. Looked like the Batmobile, man. Yes. I used to play in that car all the time, standing up in the seat on that big steering wheel. It must have <laughs> yeah. been this big as a kid, you know, probably more like this. And, um, oh my God, can you imagine how much gas that must have gone through? Oh. And I don't know for a fact, but I believe it had a 472 motor in it. Uh, probably. And, yeah. and, true, you know, before we uh, drove it across country, my dad was a refrigeration air conditioning mechanic, so he installed aftermarket air conditioning Ooh, in it. Damn. So, as if the 472 was not enough to suck up a whole entire tank of gas in 10 miles. Add a compressor to that. Yeah, yeah factor that in. Yep. But we drove in style, 3,000 miles, air conditioned Cadillac, my mom and dad smoking like chimneys, <laughs> windows rolled up, oh, you'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> You're tough. <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, or it just kills you. Or that too. Yeah. So, uh, any cars you want to add to the list, Corvette Ron? Yes. Now, yeah. this is one that I was thinking of, and I'm surprised it didn't make this list. Remember the Suzuki Samurai? Oh, the one that rolled? Rolled. Constantly. Mm -hmm. They had, it spent more time on its roof than on its wheels. <laughs> they were saying that, uh, <laughs> the joke was, what's this flap? in the bottom, on the floorboard of your car. And people would, oh, that's the sunroof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got it. Because it was so, upside down. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They were notoriously top-heavy, short wheelbase, narrow wheelbase, and people drove them like a car. And you couldn't take them off-road. No. You, if you hit a curb wrong, the thing would just tip over. Yeah. Uh, I cannot believe that that did not make this list. It, it should be... If not the worst cars, the most dangerous cars of all time. To be sure. <sighs> all right, so there you go. Uh, we offer these cars up as the worst of all time, and I'm sure there's a lot more that we could we could do on. But we're going to leave that to you, our viewers. Uh, down below, the, as you know, as YouTube viewers, 
there's an area for you to leave comments for our video, and we'd love to have you do that there. Uh, some of the worst cars that you've ever had yep. or that you've ever known of. I was surprised, frankly, that the Vega didn't make it. Shocked. I know. Um, I remember a girlfriend in high school, her dad bought her a brand new Vega, uh -huh. and um, she drove it to school for about a week, and then one day we were going somewhere together in her car, and she goes, do you want to drive? And I go, I guess. Well, the clutch went out. Uh -huh. Yeah. And her father thought it was me. Oh, uh, well, yeah, uh, he probably was doing burnouts. You were driving it in a Vega. <laughs> you can't do a burnout in a Vega. It's impossible. Uh, unless you're like Ronnie and you drop a 350 motor in there. Yeah, I yeah. had a Vega that would do burnouts. Yeah, that, that's sure. what a fall would do. Yeah, so. I still have the kink in my neck from <laughs> the time you took me out for a ride when we first met. That was fun. All right, we got to get out of here, okay? Because yeah. this is all the time that we're allotted. Actually, no one gives a crap. <laughs> We're just done with this episode. Yeah. All right? That's behind the scenes, okay? Perfect. I'll edit that out later. <laughs> uh, uh, so, anyway, uh, you'll find all of the information on us below, including our website, which yep. is menaresosmart.com. Be sure and go there and check out the store because you're going to find something really cool you're going to want there. I can't say anything more than that, Ronnie. And don't you. Please? No. Just a tidbit. If you don't start shaping up and behave, I'm going to turn this car around and we're going to go home. That's much better. Now we're going to Farrell's. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. I'm Lou Gallagher. Oh, Are you sure? I was when I came in this morning. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.